Well, here we are. This is Thomas from the Great North Pagan Podcast. Comes from you on location in in Moorhead, Minnesota, at the Yonkop Center for the ninth annual Celtic Festival, or Celtic Fest, as some of us kind of refer to it as. For once, I got here bright early in the morning. probably see one thing. There's no snow. The snow got was gone since I left us to that other blog. It's ironically also the fact that today is also St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. I hear bagpipes. It's a lovely dress you're having there. <laughs> I'm filming for the Great North Pagan podcast, so. <laughs> well, the purse actually belonged to my great grandmother who was Scottish. Oh, really? So uh, I think it belongs to the rest of it. Oh, that's neat. <laughs>
I'm recording for the Great North P- Pagan Podcast. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> right oh, you do have a line. <laughs> Face me. Okay. Hold it in your... Thank you. 
on your chest there is that just for like reloading or this is for reloading each one of these bottles has enough powder in it uh, to fire at one time this is actually a, uh, a collar of bottles for a, a musketeer because I've got a, a pouch for the musket balls okay um, the gren grenadier would not have a pouch he doesn't need the musket balls but he does have to have someone handing a grenade huh. That would that must require a lot of strength to hold that when they like you said nowadays they just have it in a simple holder. Right. It's not too bad. Yeah. You know, to try to hold that. Oh, it's heavy it's, enough, yeah, it's got some weight to it. Right. <laughs> I mean you have to have a fair amount of steel there to be able to withstand. To withstand the blast. The blast. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's okay. a little, little musket ball right there. Yeah. <laughs> and of course the, the uh, the musketeer had to make his own musket balls. He would be issued a pound of lead, and he has a ball mold that's the same size of his, as the, the caliber of his musket. Because the, the muskets are not mass-produced, they're, they're made individually, and so the barrels are going to range in, in size from, from maybe a, a 65 caliber up to a 75, maybe even as big as an 80 caliber gun. This, this one is, I think, about a 72, which is just less than three quarters of an inch. And so, and then the ball mold will create the, the musket ball that's going to fit right down in there. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I drop this in there, it would just roll back out because there's no patch on it. But uh, I really don't want to find out. <laughs> but I bet I certainly really packed the wall back then. Yeah, and. Uh, they, they were 
they were, were lethal at a fair distance, it's just they weren't accurate. Uh, so whether you, whether you got hit or not was just, you know, pretty much the, the, the luck of the draw. <laughs> Well, like, if one I end don't work, you use the other end? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it does yeah. turn into a battle. If it has a club, it's necessary. If it is a club. It, yeah. Yeah. If you miss one, you get it with the other one. Yeah. 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 Uh, and in fact, one of the commands is club muskets. Yeah. Or, but you don't want to do that. Um, and not with a gun as old as that. Uh, musketeers are going to they're going to have a sword. You're probably going to have other knives. Just about all of the soldiers have several blades on them. They probably had that like that little dagger that was like right, right oh, yeah. coming out. The is that one with the tricorn when you just took out? Is that is that got three? No. Nope, just two. Just, uh, just two. Yeah. Um, the the three edge carrying dagger was more of I think an Italian style. Well, the Germans sure. had them too. Yeah, okay. Um, I wasn't sure whether that was three, four, nine. Yeah.
So that was our some of our munchkins dancing there. Here we have a very difficult dance. It's only really used for shows. It's called the treble reel.
set dances of Ireland. That's where our square dances came from. And actually, we have the French to thank for most of that, because a lot of it came from the French originally, spread to England, Ireland, and Scotland. So, now, where's my Connemara lady? There she is. Uh, Connemara is the western part of Ireland, and we happen to have, can we call you Connemarites? <laughs> what? A Galwegian. We happen to have a, an authentic Galwegian with us here. This is Miss Ethnia Killale from Galway. Just because I love her so much, and I like to... Just, you know, yeah, she's my, she's my showpiece. No. She dances with us, with the uh, older group that we had started, or I should say the adult, I shouldn't use the word older. About five or six years ago, we got a grant, in fact, we got it two years in a row, through the North Dakota Council on the Arts, to work with adults to learn some of the very old style of Irish dancing. The style that you're seeing here today, some of which is old style, and Shanos, you saw a little bit of Shanos in the Connemara set. Uh, and then some of it is more step dancing, which didn't even become real popular until 1958, and that kind of picked up changing the old style a little bit. Kaylee's are party dances. We'll be doing one of those again. The bonfire dance was a party dance, or a Kaylee. And we'll be doing another one of those in a minute as well. As we finish, we just have two more dances to show you. But I wanted to mention that we would love to have more dancers. We are having a Kaylee tonight, actually, at the McDonald's School of Irish International Dance from 7 to 9. We're at, on Broadway in the Black Building. There'll be signs up there, and you can pick up brochures and stuff up front there. Um, and from 7 to 9, so if you feel like coming out and doing a little dancing, I'll be teaching all the Kaylee dances as we go. But we'd like to really get enough people that we can start doing it on a regular basis. So people will know them, and we'll just, it'll be a family kind of a thing for any ages, every age. I would like Ethmia to say a little um, greeting to you in Irish, if she would. She's really good. She's been to Connemara, and she is tra tra trained over there. So she does have the authentic Irish steps, which I don't have. I'm hopping and leaping here. My <laughs> uh, mine are more the Kaylee steps. So anyway, I hope that you all will think about it and have a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Banaclala Parag. It's Guramila Mahaka. My great-great-grandfather, who I was named after, came over from Scotland in the late 1800s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You are Edinburgh District. It's a family name from the Edinburgh District. Nope. Really? Uh, the um, district target. Yes, you target, yeah. This is, yeah. And because it's a family name, you don't have uh, an actual... Thank you. Yeah, my mother says I've been descend descended from like ten different clans, so it's like I would not that. That would make them hard to play sometimes. It's a beautiful tartan, I have to mention that. But see, only people that have that affiliation name are allowed to wear that, because that's like you're wearing your name. Yeah. When they fought in battle, mm -hmm. they could tell there was a Macintosh in the field, there's a Parkinson over there, they just look at her plate, and they mm -hmm. knew where the men were. It was just like designation, pretty much. Right, it's like a name, a name badge. You were the Finley family, or you were the Macintosh family. So because you have that name, you are, and only you are allowed to wear I can't wear it because it's not my chart. I've been shopping around for my own kilt, so that's that will help me greatly to find yeah, the right. Yeah, but it's the Edinburgh district, and they actually uh, print large or not print, but uh, they actually weave like 500 yards at a time. So a lot of people 
that don't have a family chart like mine, but they have a district chart. And because they have so many people at district chart, but you're the only one that saw the work. Wow. Like I'm, nobody else can wear Farkas and Park. Yeah. And because this is this is our name. This is who I am. And same thing. This is and then you have like you've got dress, casual, ancient, modern, tartan. And the ancient ones, like that one over there, these natural dyes. From flowers and plants and, and mm -hmm. books and whatever. So it's not as bright as the modern. This this is an ancient Parkinson, and I really love the ancient Parkinson because it's soft, it's more muted. Oh yeah. And and the uh, the newer Parkinson has artificial colors and they're, they're, they're just a lot brighter. But yeah, if you'd like to photograph that, I can hold it for you. Yeah, that's. Let me see if I can get the flat. That the Interborough District. Wow. Some of the Putnam family was that deep in it. <laughs> well, so far so good. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can see I'm all decked out. <sighs> someday, someday, me and my daughter will we'll go to Scotland and. Brandon, if you happen to be watching, you were here like almost a year old when I took you here.
today is a fine day, and here you are spending it indoors, but this is an awesome event. That was a tune called The Mill. Some people call it The Mill, The Mill Oak. It's a very Scottish tune. And I'm playing a bag it's, it's always fun to take my pipes out in public and, have, and see people's responses. A lot of people have come up to me and looked puzzled and said, what is that? It sounds like a bagpipe, but it's not. What is it? And I say, it's a bagpipe. Well, most of us see the Scottish, the Highland pipe, the Great Highland pipe, like the band of Heather Thistle is playing earlier. And this is not that. This is a Scottish small pipe, and it's from the lowlands of Scotland, down by the English border. So it's quite different instruments, actually fingered the same, but it's designed not for playing in a big group of other pipers. It's a solo instrument. It's designed to play, like with a dance band, or in people's homes for more social music, things like that. If at any point during the program you have questions, please don't be shy, raise your hand and ask, and I'll try and come up with a reasonable answer for you. But a lot of people accuse me of playing Iliad pipes, and though I would dearly love to be able to play the Iliad pipes, these are not those. These are the Scottish small pipes. Retreat here because these people are wonderful. To my far right is Laura McKenzie. And Laura is a phenomenal singer, but she also plays all sorts of wind instruments besides voice. She's got an Irish whistle there, a wooden whistle. She's got other whistles. There's a penny whistle. There's pipes, um, all sorts of things. She was one of the last Bush Performing Arts Fellowship people in the state of Minnesota, where she is a master teacher. I'm going to move There we go. And um, so she had an apprentice. Uh, did uh, I don't know? Did were you on Dahi's thing? On the CD, the okay. What was your What was your What was your project? Yeah. Oh, sorry. She didn't have a project. She just got the fifty thousand dollars. Okay, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, and she also teaches and does wonderful things. And you're going to be delighted with what she does with those those different instruments. Now, right here, who I'm touching is Ross Sutter. Ross has been at the Celtic Fair before. And um, he's a great children's entertain entertainer. That's an internal entertainer. He's a great children's entertainer. Um, he is an amazing Scandinavian entertainer as well as Celtic. So he's got his guitar here. I saw a bar on behind me. And of course, yes, he brought his fruit. I don't know if he's using his fruit, but he has his fruit here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, we, we can count on it. Sure. Oh. I can see you right here. We have yeah, we can count on the fruit. You guys can't leave. We need you a little bit later, okay? All right, good. And uh, I'm going to let them take it away. They also play uh, in many different groups. Um, together, solo, duet. No, you don't play together. Yeah, you do. Um, Northern Gale, is that the name of the group here? Yes? Yeah, at uh, 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, Northern Gale and Danielle will join you then? Yeah. Okay, and Danielle will join them then. Um, and I know that uh, both of them um, know my Irish singing teacher, Dahi, and they perform with Dahi and Katie McMahon. Um, she's even performed with Lori Line and all that sort of thing. So enough said about them. They're wonderful, delightful Celtic entertainers. Give them a warm welcome. Scott, not Scott, Ross Sutter and Laura McKenzie. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> well, we're going to start out with a song uh, about, we're going to dedicate, about food. And we're going to dedicate it to those little Welsh cookies. Is there anybody else out there that loves them as much as Laura? Yeah, me too. I mean, they're just outstanding. This is called Grat for Gruel. Grat is past tense in broad Scots for greet, which means to cry. And it's a story of uh, a young girl who marries a weaver. And it's kind of a warning to girls, don't marry a weaver, because they don't aspire to much besides their weaving and their daily bowls of gruel, which is kind of a, a, a rough oatmeal. And she tries everything, throwing away the pot, throwing away the spoon to cook it with, and even bringing out fancy delicacies like Welsh cookies. But he says, get out of here with all that stuff. Give me my gruel. <clears throat> in the north and oh but he was cruel and the very first night that he got wed he sat and he grabbed for gruel he sat and grabbed for gruel oh he went out want his gruel and the very first night that he got wed he sat and he grabbed for gruel 
there's nay a part in a the roost for me to mock your gruel on the wash and pot it'll day with me for I am and hey my gruel for I am and hey my gruel I win all ones my gruel on the wash and pot it'll day with me for I am and hey my gruel But there's nay a school in a the boost for me to suck your grow. Ah, the garden's made it all day with me, for I am and hey my grow. For I am and hey my grow, oh, I win our ones, my grow. Ah, the garden's made it all day with me, for I am and hey my grow. Hey, my grow, hey, my grow, hey, my grow, hey, my grow, hey, my And cakes and set them down on a stool. Ah, get wah, get wah, will you fall to rouse for I'm and hey, my groom. For I'm and hey, my groom. Oh, I went out once, my groom. Ah, get wah, get wah, will you fall to rouse for I'm and hey, my groom. Come, all ye girls in all the north, never marry a weaver. The very first night that he'll get wet, he'll sit, he'll greet for gruel. He'll sit and greet for gruel, oh, he win out once his gruel. And the very first night that he'll get wet, he'll sit and he'll greet for gruel. Scottish small pipes here that we're going to use for this selection. And in the middle, sandwiched in between the tunes, is Rattlin' Roarin' Willie. It's a song about a guy going to a festival or a fair, and uh, someone's trying to talk him into selling his fiddle for a pint of wine, but at the end of the day, his fiddle is his best buddy, he would never give it up. And at the end, we play a Scottish slip jig called I Hey a Wife. Oh my aim, or I have a wife of my own. Well, Laura's going to tune up a little bit here, and uh, it's so great to be back at this festival. Um, it's such a well-run festival, and I don't know if you folks know that. I suppose if you stand in line for a little while, you sometimes think uh, it isn't, but uh, it's really well-run. We're well taken care of from the minute we walk in the door till we go away with a little money in our pockets. It's really a nicely run festival. So congratulations to Fargo Moorhead for putting on such a great festival. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, yeah. Not just me, but Ross, everything this monitor almost way down. Thank you. We don't like to know what we're doing.
Willy and he come to the fair for to sell his fiddle and buy some other wear. Pot to win his fiddle, the song to bring the sea. Rattle and roll and Willy, you have to come in to me. Will you come sell your fiddle, come sell your fiddle so fine. Oh, will you come sell your fiddle and buy your fine the wine. Buy should sell me fiddle, the world would think of us man. Many surround and they need me fiddle and I may have. As I come by, Frank Allen, I can only kick it bend, rattle and roar it, Billy was sitting at young Morden, sitting at young Morden, the mongrel company, oh, rattle and roar it, Billy, you have to come take to me, Billy, come sell your fiddle, come sell your fiddle, so fine, Billy, come sell your fiddle, and buy your fine, your wine, fine, should sell your fiddle, the world will think of us, man, many's a rant, and they hate me fiddle, and I have. Rattle and roar and Willie and he go to the fair Hope to sell his fiddle and buy some other wear Part and Willie and his fiddle, the soft to print the sea Rattle and roar and Willie, you have to come in to me Willie, come sell your fiddle, come sell your fiddle so fine Willie, come sell your fiddle and buy a fine of wine Buy should sell me fiddle, the world would think of us man Many so ran and they gave me fiddle and I had
Um, I'll be reading key power to go with the dance. Uh, next up, the Dusty Miller, which is a dance developed to go with the same with a tune by the same name. In 1790, Scottish poet Robert Burns rewrote the lyrics, and this dance was created about the same time. When the Scots started to immigrate to the New World, they brought their music and dance with them. Modern square dancing has its beginning in Scottish dance, and you may recognize some of the steps used in this dance.
Corps. This dance was created as a tribute to the Scottish foot soldiers who wore blue bonnets or hats as a part of their uniform. The young girls would go to the top of the bluffs to look for the blue bonnets coming home from the war. Then the girls would take their returning soldiers back to their towns for food and much needed rest. <laughs>